A child going missing is always cause for concern, especially when they've been unaccounted for for several weeks, months, or even years. But to have two children in the same family go missing at the same time and not be heard from for decades is maybe even more devastating. Let's talk about Scott and Amy Finn Dill, who haven't been publicly seen or heard from in over 40 years. Scott Curtis Fendell was born on January 23rd, 1965. Not much is known about his biological father, but his mother, Margaret, married a man named Roger Fendell when Scott was very young. On August 25th, 1970, Margaret and Roger Fendell welcomed a daughter, Amy Lee Fendell. But Margaret and Roger Fendell's marriage reportedly wasn't very good. In January 1978, Roger left the family and moved from their home in Alaska to Arizona. After this, Margaret invited her sister, Kathy Schoenfelder, to move in with her, 13-year-old Scott, and 8-year-old Amy. For the Fendel schoenfelder household, the night of September 4, 1978 was a lively one. According to Terry Schoenfelder, Margaret and Kathy's brother, the women wanted to celebrate. I assume the celebration was related to Margaret's recent divorce, but I'm not 100% sure. Along with Scott and Amy, the women spent the evening at a restaurant slash bar called Good Time Charlie's. More on this place later. Around 10 p.m., the family arrived back at their cabin to drop off the kids. Then Margaret and Kathy went back to the bar. After getting home, Scott and Amy went to visit their neighbors, the Luptons, who had kids around their age that they often played with. Another neighbor saw lights on in the Fendel's cabin around 11.45 p.m. Margaret and Kathy arrived back home between 2 and 3 a.m. Right away, they noticed several red flags. Despite Scott and Amy's fear of the dark, all the lights in the cabin were off. There was a pot of boiling water on the stove, along with tomatoes and a box of macaroni, one of Scott's favorite snacks. At the time, the women didn't think too much of it. They thought the kids had already gone to bed or decided to stay the night with the Luptons, so they went to bed themselves. Margaret left for work the next morning around 8.30. Kathy woke up around noon and wasn't too alarmed when she didn't see the kids, thinking they were already at school. Margaret would try to call the school at some point that day asking for Amy when she learned neither of her children had shown up. She wanted to leave work, but her boss wouldn't let her. After school, the Lupton children arrived at the Fendel cabin asking for Scott and Amy. When Kathy learned from them that her niece and nephew had never showed up for school, she called Margaret and then the police. I couldn't find a lot of information about the investigation, only that the police questioned a lot of people and that bullet casings were found outside the cabin. It's not clear if these bullet casings were related to Scott and Amy's disappearance or if they were from someone who just liked to shoot. But despite the lack of publicly available information in this case, there has been quite a bit of speculation. There are a handful of prominent theories I want to discuss here. The first theory is that Scott and Amy were abducted by a stranger. There were reportedly a lot of, let's say, unsavory characters in the area. Did someone, maybe some kind of predator, see the kids at the bar and decide to follow them home? Or did they somehow maybe realize the kids were home alone or were going to be home alone and it was a crime of opportunity? I also found some talk of a man who lived in the area and was trying to open a hotel in Anchorage as possibly being involved. But if Scott and Amy were taken by a predator, who was the intended target? Was one child taken and the other was in the wrong place at the wrong time? What happened to them after the kidnapping and where are they now? The next theory is that they were taken by a friend of their mom's. I use the word friend rather loosely here. According to the people who believe this theory, Margaret Fendel liked to party a lot and let some people into her house she might not have known very well. Was one of these people responsible for the disappearance? There were no signs of a struggle inside the cabin. Other than the food left out and the lights off, not much seemed out of place. Did Scott and Amy go willingly with someone they knew or at least recognized, even if they didn't know them very well? 
Or did they not try to fight back because they were threatened somehow? A Web Sleuths user also speculated that Scott and Amy had to go somewhere unexpectedly. Maybe they needed something else for their food, or one of them got hurt, and they had to leave the house but met with foul play while they were out. Either of these theories could explain why there was food left out that looked like it was still being prepared, but no evidence of a struggle. The next theory is that a family member is responsible for Scott and Amy's disappearance. The name that comes up the most is Roger Fandel, Margaret's recent ex-husband, Amy's biological father, and Scott's surrogate father who had raised him since he was a toddler. Remember, Margaret and Roger Fendel's marriage had reportedly been pretty bad. Did he kidnap his own children, maybe out of spite or to hurt Margaret or maybe in some sort of custody dispute? And if he did, why did he wait so long after the divorce and what happened to them afterward? Terry Schoenfelder is highly suspicious of his former brother-in-law. In 2010, he commented on a web sleuth thread about the case, saying if Roger was responsible, it might have had to do with a drug deal gone wrong. In June 2020, Terry gave an interview with the Crime Over Coffee podcast, which I'll leave a link to below if you want to listen. In this interview, Terry claimed Roger hasn't really been involved with the investigation. He also recalled an incident not too long after Scott and Amy went missing, just days afterward actually, where Roger confronted Margaret with a gun and said, they're after me, not you. Terry's not sure who they could be. He believes Amy is still alive, but Scott was killed shortly after they went missing. Another reported incident involves Kathy Nichols, who was Roger Fendel's live-in girlfriend at the time of the disappearances. Years later, Kathy Nichols allegedly told Roger's uncle that she would tell him what happened to Scott and Amy in exchange for $5,000. Terry believes that she genuinely does know what happened. Another web sleuths user claims that they were threatened by Roger's family. According to this user, they started looking into the case and Roger and his family weren't too happy about this. They even found out where this person lives and their phone number, even though neither were publicly listed at the time. Roger Fendel was considered a suspect by police at one point, but never charged. In the Crime Over Coffee interview, Terry Schoenfelder also mentioned Roger's uncle, Herman Fendel. The two men were already at odds, and Roger even convinced police at one point to dig up Herman's yard, either because he was suspicious or maybe out of spite. The next point isn't really a theory, but it's something I saw a lot of discussion on and wanted to address. There has been quite a bit of criticism of Scott and Amy's mom, Margaret Fendel, and their aunt, Kathy Schoenfelder. People have questioned why they didn't check on the kids when they got home, or why they assumed they were asleep or at a neighbor's when there were so many signs that something was off. Others have suggested they were drunk and didn't think about it. Others still insist that it was a different era and there wasn't as much fear about things like kidnapping and child predators at the time. One blogger did some digging on Good Time Charlie's, the bar that Margaret and Kathy took Scott and Amy to that night. According to this blogger's research, this bar is actually a strip club. A quick online search does bring up a similar establishment in Saldana just about 10 miles down the road. It's not clear if this is the same establishment the Fendels went to in 1978. I haven't seen anyone explicitly state that Margaret Fendel was involved in her children's disappearances, and I'm certainly not accusing her or anyone else of anything. I just wanted to bring this up because it's pretty prominent in online discussions about the case, and it would have felt weird to just ignore it. The last thing I want to bring up is a Facebook user named Amy Fendel Johnson. Terry Schoenfelder found her via Roger Fendel's friend list, but I'm not sure if he was the first person to notice her. This woman was reportedly born the same year as Amy Fendel and looked a lot like her. However, she shut down her page after it started getting a lot of attention, presumably from people interested in the case. Scott and Amy Fendel were last seen on September 4th, 1978 in Sterling, Alaska. Their case is classified as a non-family abduction. Scott Curtis Fendel was 13 years old when he disappeared. 
He was 4 feet 11 inches tall and 74 pounds, with brown hair and blue or hazel eyes. He was last seen wearing a striped t-shirt and jeans. If he were alive today, he would be 56 years old. Amy Lee Fendel was 8 years old when she disappeared. She was 4 feet tall and 52 pounds, with blonde hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a sweater, a red and blue vest, and striped jeans. If she were alive today, she would be 50 years old. If you have any information about the disappearance of Scott and Amy Fendel, you can contact the Alaska State Troopers Missing Persons Unit at 1-907-262-4400. You can also contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. These numbers will also be listed in the description. So that is the case of Scott and Amy Finn Dell. Terry Schoenfelder says he thinks this case will only be solved if someone decides to come forward. I've covered cases before that were solved because of information people gave years later, so hopefully that will one day be the case here as well. If you found this video interesting or informative, I would love it if you would hit the like button and share it with your friends. For more missing persons cases, cold cases, and other general dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Sorry if the lighting or sound is a bit off today. We're in the middle of a decent sized storm. The power and internet have already gone out a couple of times, so hopefully everything will go smoothly from here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.